State of Louisiana created the Road Home Program 16 years ago to send federal grants to more than 100,000 homeowners to help them rebuild, of course, after Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. Mm -hmm. And so why is the state suing them now? That's the question. They're suing thousands of them, even though they did rebuild and return to their homes. And eyewitness investigator David Hammer has been reporting on the Road Home since it began in 2006. Well, now he joins with our partners at the Times-Picayune and the National Investigative News Organization, ProPublica, to investigate disaster disaster after disaster. Celeste Matthews rebuilt her flooded house in the Girttown neighborhood of New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. And like 119,000 other Louisiana homeowners, she did it with help from a grant from the state's Road Home Rebuilding Program. But anyway, I was happy, I was excited because I said that, you know, even though I had some insurance, I didn't have enough where I could have rebuilt this house, you know, and did the improvements to it that I did do. The Road Home Program was designed to cover what insurance didn't after Hurricanes Katrina and Rita slammed the state back to back in 2005. Louisiana got more than $11 billion from the federal government to run the Road Home, and its big picture success is undeniable. More than 100,000 families got grants to rebuild and reoccupy their homes. And as the state's administrator says, that's mostly what happened. What we wound up with was about 95% of the homes that were helped by Road Home being rebuilt and inhabited after that. So it was the new vinyl siding, right? right that you vinyl put siding, in. Yeah. But there's more to the Road Home story, and Celeste Matthews knows it all too well. Just days after returning from yet another evacuation last year for Hurricane Ida, she woke up to a knock on the door from a sheriff's deputy. So you're trying to deal with the aftermath of Ida, and then somebody shows up with this, these papers talking about suing you, you know, for your house, and basically my house is all I have, you know? 16 years after Katrina laid waste to her home, the state was suing this former state social worker, trying to take back a big portion of her road home grant and poised to put a lien on her house if she didn't pay up. You know, I tried to be a, a caring and a compassionate social worker. You know, I, I did my job, but I went above and beyond the, the call of duty. And I feel like, I, you know, I've done this for the state. Now the same state of Louisiana is talking about trying to take my house away from me. The state wants her to pay back $30,000, the portion of her road home grant called the Elevation Incentive Grant. In addition to home repair grants, the federal government let the state of Louisiana give homeowners these extra grants to raise their houses higher so they wouldn't flood in future storms. Matthew's house was already raised before Katrina, but not high enough. She says a road home agent encouraged her to take the extra money, telling her it was okay to use it to cover the increasing costs of repairs. Well, I talked to somebody from there and they were saying, well, even if you don't use the money for elevation, there were some other things that you can do, you know. The state is now suing 3,500 homeowners like Matthews. We joined with the National Investigative Newsroom ProPublica and the Times-Picayune to review hundreds of those lawsuits. Some of the sued homeowners claim in court records that road home representatives who worked for ICF Emergency Management Services, the company hired by the state to run the grant program, told them it was fine to use their elevation grants on repairs. Some even provided forms where they checked a box electing not to elevate, but they claimed program officials encouraged them to take the extra money anyway. Several courts have ruled for the homeowners but the state isn't accepting those excuses. Everybody who got the grants had to sign a document that said, that, that articulated all of the requirements. HUD has been pressuring the state to pay back every dime in grant money that wasn't used properly. No one at the state wants to sue people. That's not, that's not the intent. They're just trying to stay in compliance. Paul Rainwater worked for the State Recovery Authority when the Road Home program was created and later oversaw the state's recovery effort. He tried a compassionate approach when he was in charge and got help from Washington. He says former President Obama's HUD secretary, Sean Donovan, promised to find a workaround for people who use the elevation grants on repairs. Because you want to prevent fraud, but there's got to be something that takes into account 
what people are going through on the ground. And Katrina and Rita are, were unprecedented and still are unprecedented events. In 2013, HUD allowed the state to change the road home rules to let people use the elevation money on repairs as long as they showed receipts. But the elevation grant agreements most people signed in 2008 didn't say anything about keeping receipts, so few of them did. They never were told to keep these receipts, to cancel checks or whatever. They did what they did, which was supposed to do, which is rebuild their home so they could put it back in commerce and live in it. Jay Abair is an attorney for Southeast Louisiana Legal Services, a law clinic that represents low-income homeowners like Matthews. He says $30,000 wasn't enough to elevate a house, and the state knew it. The ultimate proof? Years later, the state added another grant program to give the same road home recipients an extra $100,000 each to cover the cost of elevation. But there was only enough money to help about a third of them. So thousands were left without enough money to elevate, and in 2017, the lawsuits began. We're paying attorneys to sue our own citizens now, which is not the thing that we would like to be doing. Many homeowners can't afford to pay, so now they face liens, potential seizure of their property, and even bankruptcy. I think the payments would be like $500 a month over five years. You know, my income is barely a little bit more than that, so I'm not able to, to pay those type of rates back to the state. The financial pain is one thing, but the emotional toll is already too much for Matthews. She says it's time to stop fighting the road home. You know, I say if they really understood the psychological trauma that they placed people through, maybe then that they would, um, you know, just forgive it. If the state can't find a way to forgive it, Matthew says all she can do is pray she doesn't lose the home she worked so hard to rebuild. In 2016, the state sued ICF, the company it hired to run the road home, claiming it mismanaged the program at every step. ICF denies it breached its contract and says it, quote, worked within the policies put in place by the state. At the same time, the state has paid private lawyers more than $11 million to sue homeowners for all kinds of road home grants. They've recovered less than $13 million so far. The state says it tried for years to work with those homeowners to help them become compliant before suing them. Tomorrow night at 10, I'll look at what the government can learn from the road home experience to fix disaster aid and avoid more disasters after disasters.